<gasps> oh no, clouds again. There's no way I can place my telescope outside tonight. <sighs> Maybe I can take the opportunity to improve my Dobsonian. Perhaps some mod. That's it. And that's what I did and I will show you in this video how I modified my 8 inch Dobsonian to store it properly. I usually store it as it is, with a 2 over the rocker. So no separation and saving more space. The thing is, I can lift easily the Dobsonian. However, a few weeks ago I hurt my back lifting all the Dobsonian. So I thought it's time to change something here. And I decided to do the same thing I did with my 12 inch Dobsonian, to add 3 legs to it. With the 3 legs I can easily place the Dobsonian on the ground, on vertical, without messing with the collimation knobs. It's not recommended to place the Dobsonian 2 vertically with the collimation knobs directly touching the ground. So the 3 legs are the ideal solution. However, in my 12 inch Dobsonian I had already 3 threaded holes on the bottom. So I only had to screw the legs. In the 8 inch Dobsonian I don't have them, so I have to screw those 3 holes. I had to drill. So I thought, while I do that, I can clean my primary mirror. Having 2 jobs in one at the same time. First, let's detach the primary mirror. Now take off the mirror clamps. I always use one bottle of distilled water with a single drop of dish detergent. Using my fingers, and this is important, always under water to clean the mirror surface, very gently. And at the end I use a new bottle of distilled water. However, in this case I only use pure distilled water. There was no need for more. And yes, you are seeing well, I'm using a bit of saliva from my mouth, which enzymes are good for the cleaning process. Just a bit, not to split all over the mirror, of course. And like that, I avoided to use the dish soap. Shake, shake, shake and ready to dry. Just place it vertically over a towel. And do all of this process inside the house. I'm doing it outside for the video only. Marking the three holes on the base in a lazy way. The correct way would be take off all the knobs and the springs and work on the other side. Anyway, these are the legs I bought and I leave the link at the description. As I will use a crimper, these are the threads measures. It's good to have threads but you don't really need it. As I'm using them, I have to drill a 10 mm hole. Now let's drill. And as you can see, I was not careful and had a mistake. It's not a problem, but it was by my laziness. I'm sure you can do it better. And after drilling the three holes, I had to clean very well all this mess. Loads of debris that are very important to clean. And after that, you will have the base in excellent condition and ready to go. And now crimping. Unfortunately, as I'm no expert on this, only two of the three threads were placed well. One of them didn't work. And after spending all the rest of my M6 threads without success, I decided to leave the hole just like that, without a thread. And it worked. I used locking nuts and washers and it stay well. The true is, you don't really need the crimper. It's enough, we just drill the three holes. Then you can attach the three legs without needing to screw. And now with the primary mirror properly cleaned, let's install it in the base and then inside the tube. Carefully, 
place the mirror at the base without touching the surface. I will use my blower to carefully take off the rest of the dust debris using both ends to avoid any accident. Place the clamps and tight with the fingers. Then with a Phillips screw leave just the thickness of a paper, almost touching the mirror. Insert the base in the tube and tighten the screws. It's very very important when marking the leg holes, you do it in a way that any of the legs touch the central bolt. As you can see here. By the way, I have much more videos about the Dobsonian which can give you great ideas. So if you like my work, give it a like to this video and subscribe for more. See? The perfect measures. The telescope can freely move and as a bonus, you can use the leg on the top to move the telescope while you're using it. Now let's test on the ground. Perfect. And now with the dust cap I always use. This is the hard part with a classic Dobsonian telescope. To center the, the objects, it's focused. Look at the stars. They are fine. If they were at this right distance, were, were even better. If we zoom a lot, we can see they are a bit elongated at the, um, the edges, but almost barely see the, this. Okay, let's live stack again. But like this, I can have it. I can have a, a good image for you to watch. It's fine. The play of this. It's easier for me to catch the play of this now. They are lower in the sky. And now I go to the Instagram to make it pop. The nebula. Auto color. Auto stretch. You see that the, the series on the next. It's a very high quality optics for this telescope. If I was using a, a cheap focal reducer, I will get all distorted here. Let's decrease the green. I'm surprised with the performance with the, the series on the next and this telescope. Look, look at these stars. So bright, 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 bright. And now, as long as we are stacking, these were uh, until now 17 frames stacked. It will stack more and more and more in real time and we will get more and more nebulosity around these seven sisters. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful cluster to watch visually also. It's like a paint, this. Now it's getting beautiful. Play at this with an 18-inch Dobsonian telescope. It's the Dobsonian power. Dobsonian power. power. The more we stack, the more details of the nebulosity we are getting. These are the Pleiades in real time, not with the nebulosity. Let me check now the, the image that we save. 60 frames, 600 seconds. So 10 minutes. Crop this because of the rotation. We crop like this. Denoise. Updating. Let's see if it works good or not. It's good. You see the difference? Look, an example of a, a good effect. It's it's awesome. The effect of the topaz, topaz denoise. Here at the left, I will zoom it for you to see. This is all grainy, all grainy with the noise and the dew and all the, the clouds and that stuff and lack of expositions. And look now after update, all, all done. Now look at this, so smooth. You see? The nebula so smooth here. No grainy stuff like we have here at the left. This software is uh, it's very nice and it's very simple to use. Yes, it's gorgeous overview. 
It's gorgeous. 18 inch of sun and telescope over an equatorial platform. And we got this. And the uh, AID noise only. I didn't touch anything. Colors, nothing. I like to preserve the colors from the stacking. They are material. 